Welcome back to our live coverage of the United Nations Climate Talks. It's day two of this conference here in Durban. I'm here with Geoffrey Allen and uh, my name's Adam Groves. We're going to be bringing you uh, interviews, expert analysis and uh, uh, a little bit of commentary over the next three hours here from the conference centre. Uh, we thought we'd start off with a, a quick wrap up of, of some of the issues that have come to our attention today. So Jeff, the Green Climate Fund is, is one we're going to begin with. Yeah, money is always a big issue uh, when it comes to climate change. Uh, how is the money going to be raised to, to deal with all the impacts? impacts of climate change, how is that money going to be distributed, how is it going to be managed. Um, there was some good movement last year at the talks to, to, to set up a group to come to get to come up with an arrangement to, to manage that process. That group worked all year and put forward its, uh, its proposals just yesterday that was put on the table here at the talks. Um, and as expected, the United States objected. Uh, they raised certain concerns and there was some concern uh, by a lot of the, the organizations here that that's going to slow up the process. Many organizations, not all, but many were hoping that this uh, this fund could be set up fairly quickly and we can move forward with the questions of exactly how the money is going to be raised, where it's going to come from. Um, but the first step is really to create the architecture for this fund. Uh, and then a lot, of, a lot of organizations thought we were pretty close. Now the U.S. Uh, and a few other organizations have raised some objections. Now that's gone back to what's called informal consultations. Uh, that means the chair of the, of the negotiations is, is going to work with the interested parties to sort it out. There's some concern that that may or may not be an open process that involves all the concerned organizations. So that raises more questions. There's also a question of when is this going to happen? Uh, she was asked that yesterday, didn't really give any specifics on what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. So, so there's some concern around the Green Climate Fund and, and how that's going to move forward. And of course this is a, a fund to, to um, bring together money that will be used to help the, the poorest uh, people in the world adapt to the worst impacts of climate change. So it's a, a really critical issue here at the talks and it's um, something that some campaigners see uh, as potentially a big win. Um, we're going to try and bring you a couple of different perspectives on this today. We've got uh, interviews lined up with the World Development Movement and also with ActionAid. Uh, we'll see various different angles on uh, how this might move forward and, and what some of the, the problems are. Um, Another talking point this morning, Jeff, was these two big petitions that were put in in the U.S. Yeah, so the U.S. is always a major player in these talks um, because, well, the U.S. is very powerful in all talks. And what the U.S. decides to do here is, is going to um, have a major impact on the outcome of, of, of the climate negotiations. So um, first there was a, a petition from a host of major uh, nonprofit organizations in the United States. I mean, uh, a huge, uh, broad uh, set of organizations. We're talking about Defenders of Wildlife, Earth Justice, Environmental Defense Fund, Greenpeace, uh, National Resources Defense Co Council, Native American Rights Fund, Oxfam America, Physicians for Social Responsibility. We're talking about all types of human rights organizations, environmentalist organizations, social justice organizations. They're all calling uh, on uh, on Barack Obama directly and Hillary Clinton as um, the, uh, the head of the State Department that sort of oversees the negotiations uh, that are going on here to tell their negotiators to be more flexible. It's always a question of flexibility uh, with the United States. They seem to come with a set of entrenched um, uh, positions and there's a question of how those will shift over the next 10 days or so. Essentially, you want them to negotiate, it sounds like. That, that's exactly the point. Um, and a, a lot of... Uh, other countries and organizations here have been very disappointed and the U.S.'s uh, inability to negotiate uh, over the past several years and so they're calling on their, uh, the, the, the negotiators of the United States to be a little more flexible this time around. And it's uh, Young and Future Generations Day here at the conference today, uh, trying to uh, get the, the, the youth involved and you've been speaking to some young people uh, just outside, Jeff. Yeah, uh, UNICEF is running a really interesting uh, program with uh, young people from South Africa who have uh, been working, they were originally involved in uh, gender justice clubs in their schools uh, and uh, they, they wanted to get more involved in the issue of climate change as well. And so uh, UNICEF brought 35 of the, the, um, the, the most uh, outspoken and uh, interested young people here to this conference over the past week and they've been here in Durban from all over South Africa learning about climate change and what the issues are and how they can they can lobby their officials to do more about climate change and take take to heart uh, their opinions. And so they've got all kinds of projects. That, you know, they, they want to do things like planting gardens and, and planting trees and, and educating their, themselves and their families and their communities about climate change and environmental issues. And they want the support of their government on that. And so they've been working on finding out how to do that and how to, how to um, really move those types of things forward working with UNICEF and uh, so they spoke to us this afternoon uh, just give us a little sense of you know, what they
they've been doing and what they said to their ministers and to the South African delegation when they met them earlier today. So we'll hear from them later today. Okay, excellent. And for those of you who, uh, who tuned in through yesterday's show, um, you'll know that the Kyoto Protocol is one of the, the, the big talking points here. Have there been any developments when it comes to that? Well, um, Kyoto is the big political um, wrangling issue here, uh, and most of the large, the, the massive political wrangling, the movement will happen next week, let's yeah. put it that way. Um, when the ministers get to town, when the high-level political people show up and can actually take some of the bigger decisions. At this point right now, it's so everyone's sort of staking out their positions. So the real, the thing we're looking at right now is this issue of, uh, first of all, will there be a second? commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol. We're currently finishing up what's called the first commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol. Essentially the first bit of it is coming to an end. Will they extend it or won't they? That's the first question. And then the second thing that uh, that, we're, uh, that we're looking at this, uh, this week is going to be not only will there be a, a second, if there is a second commitment period, how long will that commitment period be? Because there's concern that if that commitment period is too long, it's going to lock in the Kyoto Protocol as the only mechanism um, for binding targets on climate change for a long period of time while we're simultaneously working on a new treaty that may delay the implementation of a new treaty. Okay, so we'll look to get to the bottom of that one uh, over the course of, of this week. And as Jeff says, this is the big political issue at these talks. It's uh, We're expecting fireworks next week um, because this is the only international binding climate law in existence. It's the only thing in place that's limiting emissions at the moment. And uh, poorer countries are de uh, desperate not to lose it. A lot of campaigners are desperate not to lose it. Um, and uh, at the moment, some people are worried that it's going gonna, it's gonna to die in Africa, it's going to come to an end here in Durban. Um, so we'll we'll bring you that uh, uh, later today. We'll, we'll bring you an update on that and, and throughout next week as the politicians arrive. Um, if you weren't here yesterday, a kind of um, a little bit of news um, from within this process is that the venue for next year's talks has been decided, and that's going to be in, in Doha in Qatar. Um, not an especially popular choice um, among uh, many of the campaigning groups here. I think uh, Qatar's per capita emissions are the third or uh, maybe even the first highest in the world, um, and uh, they haven't um, always played a constructive role within the process so a, a bit of a contentious uh, decision but um, we'll look forward to uh, bringing you the talks from there next year I hope. Um, we're going to take you to a short video now from um, one of our partners Greenpeace um, and uh, in the meantime we'll get our first guest uh, Murray from uh, World Development Movement uh, sat in place uh, and we're going to talk about the Green Climate Fund a little bit, a little bit and also about the role of the different um, uh, countries at these talks and, and how they go about getting their way.